Hello and welcome to the fourth Inventory Pro tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we're going to set up the skill bar as well as the bank with triggers. Um, so let's just get started with the um, with the skill bar. So first, inside our canvas, we're going to create a new panel. And I'm just going to move it to the bottom. Alright, and then we're going to Inventory System, Windows, Skill Bar, give it a name. Alright, uh, then we have to add, assign our container, like all the other uh, containers, collections. Um, so let's do that. Just drag that in. All right, and we want to assign keys, and keys are essentially the key combinations we wish to use. Um, so if I say I wish to have nine slots, so nine elements in us inside of our skill bar, then we can say I would like the first one to be alpha one, which is the top row of your keyboard, and I would like to show it inside of the UI. It should show that button or that uh, digit. Um, and the same goes for the others, so... Alright, so we've set up those, um, the key combinations and the key triggers. Um, and this will also define how many elements will be generated inside of this collection. So if you note on the other collections, let's grab the inventory, we have an initial collection size, which is essentially how many elements will be generated inside of this collection. Uh, as you can see, inside the uh, canvas, the skill bar we don't have that um, which will be defined by the amount of keys so if we have nine keys nine elements will be generated all right so we have a gray material and a default material um, and these are really only necessary if um, I should really explain this first um, we have references and a reference is basically when an item is generated it's not removed from the original location and it's placed inside of the skill bar and then uh, creates a reference between the two and when you use the item inside of the skill bar you actually use the item um, the original item um, if you don't wish to use that and you wish to move the item directly to the skill bar don't check this but for this tutorial we're actually going to use references um, there are two types of references so now we can actually override our button prefab uh, as described in the previous tutorial these define the UI behavior so in this case, we're going to create some custom behavior for the um, for the slots inside of the skill bar. So okay, so we have uh, let's see. We have UI item prefab, which is the default. We said that in our settings in the previous tutorial. Um, this will have normal default behavior which you expect inside of the inventory. Then we have the loot which is actually I can just show it I think. As you can see the loot has a custom layout it doesn't really do anything special it just has a different layout. Um, then we have the key trigger and that's the one we want to use inside of our um, inside of our skill bar because this actually defines uh, specific key combination uh, behavior so if we press a, a key on our keyboard it will actually trigger the item so that's the one we uh, we definitely want to use but we also have some character stats uh, oh, oops, wrong object UI item reference sum and this will be a reference and it will generate a sum of all the items inside of the inventory so if we place this inside of our skill bar it will actually generate the total amount of items inside our inventory and show it inside of this object. So not the actual reference, but all of the items of the same type. So let's try that one out first, and we can always swap it out if we don't like it. So this one. Okay, and then obviously we have to check use references. 
Um, the gray material is actually used when none of them are left, so with the sum generated, if there are no, zero items of those inside of the inventory, we can actually gray out the block and um, to visually show that, and the default material is the one you would normally expect. So let's just grab that. So we have the default and the gray one. It's inside the uh, materials UI folder. All right, so just one thing left to do. We actually have to assign a skill bar inside of the managers. So if we tick managers, we'll actually see skill bar. There it is. And we actually have to assign the skill bar inside of this slot. So once we've done that, we can actually run it. And it won't be perfect because all of our items are shown inside of a single stack. And that's because we actually forgot to assign the layout. So if we go to add components, and then layout, we can actually choose a horizontal layout group. If we start it now, you'll see that the skill bar is actually displayed properly. It's a bit wide, but we can actually just make the skill bar a bit uh, less wide. Pick up the items, and if I drag them into the uh, skill bar, and I hit the key, it actually doesn't do anything. And that's because inside of a skill bar, we actually have the setting can use from collection. And you have to check that in order to use the item. Nom, 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 so nom, when nom, I tap nom. it now, it actually works. Uh, as I said before, the skill bar actually has two types, so we can actually disable references, and then we can create a skill bar where the item is actually moved to the skill bar uh, when you drag it in. So instead of the reference sum, we can actually grab the key trigger, uh, key trigger and that one actually has all the triggering elements like keyboard combinations and everything, um, but can work without reference. So if we drag that one in. We shift key trigger, we disable use references. Let's make sure we check that. I just did that over in time. So now when we pick up a couple of items and we drag it into the skill bar, it actually moves to the skill bar as you saw from here. Now we can do that from everywhere. We can drag from our uh, character window as well and it puts it inside of the uh, inside of the skill bar. We can actually use it from there. Nom 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 nom. All right, so that's about it for the skill bar. Uh, let's set up the bank and the uh, and the trigger for the bank. All right, so now we're actually going to create the bank UI element. So I'm um, just going to create a new panel again, and let's pin it to the left side. Uh, like that. And we'll set the pivot. And as I explained before in one of the previous tutorials, when the game starts, it will reset the position to zero zero of the window. So we can actually just design outside of a viewport, so none of our windows are uh, on top of each other. So we have a bit of uh, room to work with. So we call this bank, and we're going to go to inventory system windows bank, and give it a unique name. Uh, we can leave that blank. We have to define the container, like always. So. Remove that one. Just give it a decent name. Okay. So we've got that. Um, we don't want to manually define it. The amount of items that are going to be generated inside of our bank UI. Uh, let's make it 40 or so. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, use move to inventory. So when you right click an item, so actually use the item inside of this collection it will actually move to the inventory so uh, otherwise you actually have to drag it um, assume you enable can use from collection here uh, it, it won't actually use the item but will actually move the item to your inventory uh, a couple of uh, audio visual stuff um, and the rest which is all the same for all the other collections as well um, so let's actually set up a layout for our container which is going to be a Yep, grid layout group, cells of about 40, and that's about it. So when we start our game now, the window will actually disappear like all the other windows. And we actually won't have a key combination to open the bank, because the bank is usually a physical location in the world, and when you go to that location and you click it, you open the bank. And when you walk away from it, the bank automatically closes. Uh, we can, can handle this behavior with triggers. Um, so let's set up a trigger. So I'm just going to create a um, simple cube as the trigger. 
and we can add the component if we go to add component inventory system and then we have triggers and we get a couple of triggers uh, some have a specific trigger like defender but uh, if if the one that you're looking for is not on the list you can take the the most generic one which is called object trigger so if we add that uh, let's call this the bank trigger and we actually have to assign the window that we wish to trigger when we use this uh, this bank so that's obviously our bank window uh, we can add animations and audio clips to this object when it's triggered so if you have an NPC or something um, so trigger when we click it um, if we toggle it so if it's already visible it's going to hide again and we can also add a uh, hover key code which is basically what you want to use for first person games so uh, let's try it out So I can pick up some objects, got them inside of my bag. I can walk towards the uh, the bank. If I click it, it actually opens the bank. And if my character walks away from the bank, the window closes. Um, this distance is by default 10 meters, but you can actually change them inside of the uh, settings editor. Uh, we have a use object distance, which is actually the distance to the um, uh, to the trigger. So you can uh, increase that and lower it, whatever, whatever you like. Um, that's about it for uh, for this tutorial. And uh, the next tutorial we're going to look into crafting. Alright, see you then.